Today we are going to be hearing me first for a read aloud again and I want you to think about the important ideas that are in this story. Often in fiction stories, just like our articles that we've read earlier, they always contain important information that the author wants the reader to learn and remember. Earlier in the year, we've read the story of the three little pigs, the three little wolves, and the big bad pig. And in these stories, there were lessons that the author wanted us to learn and remember. We discussed those important lessons about life in those stories earlier in the year. Now, the author doesn't always tell you, the reader, directly what the important idea or message is, but for you as the reader, you have to use clues to figure out what those important ideas or messages are. Authors often use the characters in the story to help the readers think about important messages or lessons about life. In Me First, our character Pinkerton has an important lesson to learn. And today, your job is going to find out what is that important lesson that the author wants Pinkerton to learn. So today we are going to reread the story. I want you to listen for the lesson that Pinkerton needs to learn. Here's our book again, Me First, by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munzinger. Your job again is to look for the lessons that Pinkerton needs to learn. Pinkerton was pink, plump, and pushy. He would do anything to be first, even if it meant bouncing off bellies, stepping on snouts, or tying tails. Me first, he cried, when he had been last in line and finished first down the slide. Me first, he cried at story time, settling on his round bottom with his big head right smack in front of the book. And every day in the school Troateria, me first, rang out and there was Pinkerton. One Saturday, Pinkerton's Pig Scout troop went on a day trip to the beach. Pinkerton was first on the bus and sat in the front row. He was first off the bus, first in the water, first out of the water, and first into the picnic basket. After lunch, the Pig Scouts decided to go for a hike. Off they went with Pinkerton leading the line, of course. As the Pig Scouts marched across the sand, they heard a faint voice far in the distance. The voice called out, who would care for a sand witch? Pinkerton pricked up his pointy ears, care for a sand witch? Oh yes, me first, he thought, and he began to trot ahead of the others. Soon, he heard the voice again, closer and louder this time. Who would care for a sandwich? Me first, cried Pinkerton, kicking up sand and leaving the other pig scouts far behind. His imagination almost burst. Peanut butter, jelly, two tomatoes, seven pickles, a slab of cheese, a blob of mayo, a big smear of mustard, all for me. First, who would care for a sand witch? Now, at full gallop, Pinkerton shrieked, me first. Over a sandy hill, he flew and kaplop. He landed face to face with a small creature with a bump on her nose and fur on her toes. Am I glad to see you, she cackled. I sure could hear you coming. Me first, me first. Me first, I guess you really would care for a sand witch. This is going to be our first turn and talk. Remember, if you have anybody around you, go ahead and share your thinking with those that are around you. If you're watching this read aloud by yourself, 
go ahead and practice thinking out loud. Now, I want you to think about these questions before answering. What is Pinkerton like in this part of the story? What do you think he needs to learn? Now that you've had a chance to share with somebody, I want to show you what I was thinking. In this part of the story, I think that Pinkerton always wanted to be first. He didn't really slow down with anything. He was going down the slide first. He was not sharing his books. He was even first to run off towards the beach and to go chase after a sandwich. Now, I think the lesson that he needs to learn is how to be patient and how to share. I'm going to continue reading the rest of the book now. I want to remind you to listen for the lesson that Pinkerton needs to learn. Oh, yes, indeed, replied Pinkerton. He jumped up and down so fast his teeth jiggled. Good, cackled the small creature. Pinkerton waited. One second, two seconds, three seconds. Well, he asked. Well, what, replied the small creature. The sandwich, begged Pinkerton. Where's the sandwich? The small creature curtsied. You're looking at her. She went on, I am a sandwich, and I live in the sand, and you said you would care for a sandwich, so here I am, care for me. All Pinkerton could say was, but I, taking no notice, the sandwich continued, you said, me first, you wanted to be the first to care for me, well, congratulations, now, just come along to my sandcastle, grabbing Pinkerton firmly, by the sleeve, she led him around a few bends. Before he could say, but I, again, the gate to her castle closed. All right, my pink, plump, and pushy one, now you care for me. You may have the honor of being the first to powder my nose and comb my toes. Seeing no way out, Pinkerton powdered her nose and combed her toes. Next, she crowed. You may be the first to put my supper in a bucket and feed me with a shovel. Pinkerton looked around. He had no choice. He put her supper in a bucket and fed her with a shovel. Rubbing her tummy, the sandwich spoke on. Finally, after you've had the privilege of being the first to wash my dishes and sweep my castle and do my laundry and curl my hair and tuck me in, you may be the first to tell me a bedtime story. Pinkerton washed the dishes, swept the castle, did the laundry, curled the sandwich's hair, and tucked her in. The sandwich stretched and yawned loudly. Now the story. I need my story. Pinkerton was so tired he could barely speak. I don't know any stories, he whimpered. Then, how about making up something? Oh, how about something concerning a pushy pig who always wanted to be first? Pinkerton sighed and began. Once upon a time, there lived a pig who always wanted to be first until one day he met a wise sandwich. Wise and beautiful, cut in the sandwich. A wise and beautiful sandwich who showed him that first was not always best. Aha, cackled the sandwich. She gave Pinkerton a slow, serious, and meaningful wink. Have you learned something? Oh, yes, 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 said Pinkerton. I promise I have. In that case, thanks for the care. Goodbye and good luck. She opened the gate and Pinkerton sped off so fast he didn't even notice the delicious sandwich she held out to him. He was just in time to catch the bus. Oh, he scooted. Pink, plump, and glad to be last. Remember that your job today as a reader was to listen for the lesson that Pinkerton needs to learn. I want to remind you to give reasons for your thinking. At the end of the story, what is Pinkerton like? What makes you think that? 
you are going to use think, pair, and share to discuss. I want to share my thinking. So at the end of the story, I think Pinkerton changed because after doing all of those chores for the sandwich, he kind of learned that first was not always best. And at the end of the book, he was okay with being last on the bus and the sandwich actually had a sandwich for Pinkerton and he didn't care much for the sandwich. He was more excited to be back with his school. So another question that I have for you is this. What is an important lesson that Pinkerton learns? Why is this an important idea for everyone to remember? Turn to your partner. Now that you had a chance to share, I want to share some of the important lessons that I think that Pinkerton learns and why I think it's important for everyone to remember. So my first important lesson that I think Pinkerton learns is that being first isn't always the best thing. It's important to remember that because nobody can be first all the time. Another important idea that I have is that I think that Pinkerton learns to, to be nicer to people. That's important for everyone to remember because the world is better when people are, are nice to each other. Also, Pinkerton learns to stop being pushy. Everyone should remember this because we all need to take turns and be fair. Now, as a reader, I want to remind you that authors often write stories that have important messages or lessons about life in them. You as the reader should understand the message or lesson through what the characters say in the story or do in the story. Often in the beginning of the lesson or the story, the, a character is being introduced and shows what his or her problem is in the beginning of the story. At the end, it usually shows how the character learns the lesson and solves the problem. You will continue to have more opportunities to think about important ideas, messages, and lessons in other stories. Let's practice reviewing the vocabulary that you learned from Monday. The words that you learned from Monday were blob and shriek. What do you know and remember about the words blob and shriek? Let's go over the meaning of the words blob and shriek. Now, a blob is a small lump or drop of something that is soft and wet. For example, a blob of hand sanitizer fell on my shoe. The second word that you learned was shriek. Shriek means scream or cry out loudly. For example, sometimes I shriek when the Seahawks get a touchdown. Shriek. So I wanna reread a few pages from me first for you. I'm going to start here. All Pinkerton could say was, but I, taking no notice, the sandwich continued. You said, me first. You wanted to be the first to care for me. Well, congratulations. The next word that we're going to be learning today for vocabulary is going to be congratulate. Congratulate means tell someone you are happy for his or her good fortune or success. In our story of me first, the sandwich congratulates Pinkerton or tells him she is happy for his good fortune because he gets to take care of her. Now, I want you to take a look at the word up top. Go ahead and point to the word congratulate. Go ahead and say the word 
congratulate. So when we congr congratulate people, that is when something good happens, happens to them. For example, if a classmate wins a race, we might congratulate her by saying, congratulations, you ran a great race. If a classmate gets a new babysitter, we might say, congratulations, I'm so happy to hear that you have a baby sister. Take a look at our sentence starter up top. I might congratulate him by saying, this is what you're going to use to begin your sentence with. So listen for today's example. If someone in our class read you a story he wrote and you thought it was terrific, what might you say to congratulate him? Turn to your partner. Now that you had a chance to share, you might have started off you started off sharing your thinking by using our worst sentence prompt. I might congratulate him by saying, you did an awesome job. Let's practice with another example. When else might you congratulate someone in our class? What might you say? Using your sentence starter, go ahead and give it a try with your partner. Now that you had a chance to share, I want to share my example. I might congratulate him by saying he draws a good picture and I love how it looks on the classroom wall. Remember that today's first word is congratulate. I want to remind you that congratulate means tell someone that you are happy for his or her good fortune or success. Take a close look at the pages in this part of the video. Now, in me first, the sandwich makes Pinkerton take care of her and do chores. I am going to reread this page and I want you to listen very closely for the word whimper because that is our next vocabulary word. The sandwich stretched and yawned loudly. Now the story. I need my story. Pinkerton was so tired he could barely speak. I don't know any stories, he whimpered. The next word that we are learning for our vocabulary today is whimper. Whimper means make weak, crying noises. Now, people and animals sometimes whimper when they are sad, tired, frightened, or hurt. In our story of me first, Pinkerton is so tired that he whimpers when the sandwich asks him to tell her a story. I am going to reread Pinkerton's words in a whimpering voice. I don't know any stories. Now, point to the word whimper. Say the word whimper. I want you to remember that the word whimper means to make weak crying noises. I want you to close your eyes and visualize this scenario. You are on the playground. You see a little boy who has fallen down and scraped his knee. He is whimpering. You are going to use think, pair, and share to discuss. What is the whimpering boy saying? How does he say it? Open your eyes and turn to your partner. If you need help, you can use the sentence prompt down below. The whimpering boy is saying blank. Now, let me give my example. The whimpering boy is saying that his knee hurts because he is frightened and hurt. Let's continue practicing using the word whimpering with this next question. When might you hear a dog whimpering? If you need help, I want you to use the prompt down below. You might hear a dog whimpering when blank. Now, let me share my example. You might hear a dog whimpering when it is begging for a snack. That is why the dog is whimpering. 
Point to today's word of whimper. Say the word whimper. And remember, whimper means make weak crying noises. Now it is time for IDR or reading to self. I want to remind you that you can read fiction and nonfiction texts. As you read, I want you to think about the important ideas, messages, or lessons in the text. Then, I want you to complete the Determining Important Ideas page for Wednesday in your packet. When you are done, you should talk about your book with someone and share your work. I was able to do this with my own book of Sheila Ray, The Brave, written by Kevin Hankins. First, I t did a picture walk. When I got done with the picture walk, I ended up reading the entire book. Then I looked up the packet and I went back into the text to help me answer some of the questions that the packet asked for. Now, the first question was this. What is the title of the book and the author's name? Sheila Ray is Sheila Ray the Brave is the title of the book and the author's name is Kevin Hankins. The second question was this. What is the topic of the text you just read? Hmm. I went back in, I looked at the book and I thought about what the topic was. And I think that the topic is about a mouse learning to be brave. And your last question on your determining important ideas page is this. What is an important message, idea, or lesson in the text? Explain your thinking with reasons. In Sheila Ray the Brave, I think the lesson the author wants me to learn is that it is okay to be scared when you are brave. Because when I look back into the book, at the beginning of the story, Sheila Ray was really brave and she was doing a lot of different things to help her be brave. But then at one point in the story, she got scared and it was very okay to be scared even though that you are brave. That is what I learned from Sheila Ray the Brave by Kevin Hankins. If you need an example, go ahead and take a look at the work that I did in this video. I didn't have the packet, but I knew that I could still get all of these questions answered and my work done by finding a piece of paper and a pencil to help me complete my work. Remember, when you finish, share your book and share your work with those around you. Have a great rest of your day.